The Lil Miss murder is the name given to the murder case of Lisa Marie Kimmel, who disappeared while on a trip home from Colorado to Billings, Montana. Her murder would remain a cold case, until DNA profiling eventually linked a prison inmate to her kidnapping, rape, and murder some 14 years later, which led investigators to the most vital piece of evidence in the case, Kimmel's missing car, which bore the distinctive personalized license plate that gave the case its name, Lil Miss. Despite frantic search efforts, she could not be saved and investigators found her body eight days later. According to a man who spent time in prison with Lisa Marie Kimmel's killer, she was in a Wyoming rest stop bathroom during her road trip to Montana when he allegedly took her at gunpoint. Based on the condition of Kimmel's body when it was found, authorities estimated the kidnapper had held her for around six days before he killed her and dumped the body into a river. Her wrists, ankles, arms, and legs showed bruising and abrasions the coroner believed were consistent with being bound with a hemp or nylon rope. Her kidnapper, later identified as Dale Wayne Eaton, reportedly also assaulted Kimmel, and kept her hidden in an old bus, with no electricity or plumbing. The search for Lisa Marie Kimmel was a frantic one, with family members anxiously joining police efforts in hopes of locating the 18-year-old girl. Sadly, on April 2, 1988, two men who were fishing in the North Platte River found Kimmel's body floating face down in a clump of weeds. Kimmel's mother, Sheila, described in her book, The Murder of Lil Miss, what it was like to receive the news Lisa Marie had been found. Eight days after her disappearance, our worst nightmare materialized. Two fishermen found Lisa's body early Saturday afternoon, April 2, 1988. She hadn't had a wreck. Her body had been dropped from the old government bridge near Casper, Wyoming, into the cold North Platte River. Our beautiful daughter was gone. Originally from Billings, Montana, Lisa Marie Kimmel was living and working in Denver, Colorado, in 1988 when she decided to drive back to her hometown on March 25th and make a quick stop in Cody, Wyoming, to pick up her boyfriend. She was planning to introduce him to her family for the first time and was eager for her parents to meet him. Her route was an eight-hour drive almost directly north, passing through the entire state of Wyoming. Unfortunately, she never made it to Cody. The last credible witness to see her alive was a highway patrol officer who pulled Kimmel over for speeding in Douglas, Wyoming, barely halfway through her trip. In 2002, when investigators finally got a hit on the DNA gathered from the Kimmel case, it turned out to match with a man named Dale Wayne Eaton, a drifter in his late 50s who happened to be in prison already. Fourteen years had passed since Kimmel's death, and her killer had been busy. At that time, he was in prison in Colorado for illegal possession of a firearm, and while incarcerated he was involved in the death of a fellow inmate, leading to an involuntary manslaughter charge. Thanks to DNA evidence and marked improvements in forensic technology, Eaton was convicted of first-degree murder, kidnapping, and sexual assault in the Kimmel case. He received a death sentence, but debates continue to rage over whether or not Eaton should stay on death row. One of the key clues in this case was Kimmel's car, a black Honda CRX, which sported custom license plates that read Lil Miss, making it easy to spot. Kimmel had gone by the nickname Lil Miss since she was a child, as her grandmother liked to call her Little Miss Lisa Marie. Although investigators found Kimmel's body, no one found her car. Despite lengthy searches, police couldn't locate the distinctive vehicle. Her father even charted a small plane, so he could fly over the route she took and try to spot it from the air. His search efforts, though extensive, were in vain. The car didn't turn up, until officials finally searched Dale Wayne Eaton's property, and found it buried there. Kimmel's last week of life, was one of pain and violence. Her kidnapper, Dale Wayne Eaton, assaulted and tortured Kimmel for six days, and it was the DNA evidence he left on her body that led to his conviction. When Eaton finished with Kimmel, he brought her to the old government bridge, where he hit her on the head hard enough to leave a four-inch crack in her skull. He then stabbed her six times before throwing her body into the North Platte River below. Greg Cooper, a former FBI profiler, believed Lisa Marie Kimmel was murdered by a very organized serial killer. Several aspects of the case were common to serial killers, such as Eaton keeping Kimmel's vehicle as a trophy and the methodical way he killed her. FBI Supervisory Special Agent Ronald Walker also pointed out the significance of the bindings on Kimmel's arms. 
Eaton and removed them before throwing the body into the river, which to Walker suggested Eaton knew they could be used as evidence. Before the major forensics breakthrough in 2002, police struggled to gather leads and information on the Lisa Marie Kimmel case. Don Flickinger, a now-retired federal agent from Billings, Montana, told the Casper Star Tribune in 2003 about the various methods the authorities used back in the 80s and 90s. According to Flickinger, he personally traveled to Texas, Nevada, and even Alaska in his quest to find Kimmel's killer. He became deeply involved in the case, spending six years taking blood samples from dozens of people for DNA, interviewing cult members, and consulting psychics. Seventeen years after the loss of her daughter, Sheila Kimmel met a publisher who wanted her to write about the death of Lisa Marie. Many people, including the publisher, believed Sheila could find closure by writing a book about her tragic loss. However, Sheila felt there wasn't any true closure for her and her husband, Ron. A book wouldn't bring their daughter back, but the Kimmels decided to write it as a way to give back to everyone who had supported her family through their nightmare. Ron Kimmel summed up their feelings about the process in a 2005 interview. We're not writers. We just happen to be a family that lived through a tragedy that people want to know about. The people who have followed this all these years deserve to know everything there is to know about it. The year-long process was tough on Sheila, who often had to dredge up painful memories and drove home the fact that the pain of her loss had never truly gone away. There were times I could stand back and be objective and other times I just couldn't. There are still areas that I can go back and, as I review the book, one can't help it, I just cry. It's just there. I guess it would be a real sad commentary on my daughter's life if I didn't feel that way. Even though it's been time, a lot of years, it just doesn't really go away. In 2012, Dale Wayne Eaton's legal representatives brought the Lil Miss case back into the spotlight, claiming their client had not received a fair trial. They made several claims, the first centered around the fact that Dr. Kenneth Ash, a psychiatrist, believed Eaton had bipolar disorder and was mentally unwell. The second claim involved a fellow inmate who had been close to Eaton. He testified against Eaton in court, revealing details of his crime. The lawyers claimed the jury had not been told the inmate was in line to receive a lower prison sentence for doing so. However, despite the lawyers' efforts, Dale Wayne Eaton remains in prison today. Kimmel's murder might have been part of a pattern of serial murders, known as the Great Basin Murders, which took place between 1983 and 1996. Most of the victims were young women who initially disappeared, only to be later found murdered. Because her body was located in a popular fishing spot, it created a public spectacle, and that her car was buried on his property, kept as a trophy. It is believed that Eaton exhibited some of the telltale signs of being a serial killer. Eaton was found guilty of all charges and sentenced to death on March 20, 2004. He appealed this conviction and lost. Scheduled to be put to death on February 2010, he sought and received a stay of execution in December 2009. It was overturned in 2014. The state is again seeking the death penalty. As of 2019, he is awaiting a new sentencing hearing on death row. Eaton is currently the only inmate on Wyoming's death row.